I think I've just watched the next worst movie of all time. I am not kidding. The film is called RPM and this is the DVD box. The cover and the photos on the back suggest that it's your typical big budget action film. It's a complete lie. The actual film probably had a budget of $2.50. This is one of those rare occasions where everything about it was done in the worst way possible. Terrible characters, terrible story, terrible cinematography, and stunts that are so lazy and cheap, they would give my former PE teacher a heart attack from embarrassment. And just how they were able to get some of these actors if it wasn't blackmail puzzles me. You're all excited to find out how bad it is, so let's watch RPM. Some people say I have a problem. I see a beautiful vintage car and I just have to steal it. And that's me, Luke Delson. We meet our main character, played by David Arquette, who steals cars and invents machines like this toy. Now listen to me. I'm being harassed by this robot, and I love it. A detective arrives to arrest him for all the cars he has stolen. He stole it, Delson. Just like he stole the other 17 vintage automobiles which have gone missing in the last okay, eight Okay, maybe he's got a little problem. Where is he? Unfortunately, he left for Germany first thing this morning. He escapes to Europe and we cut to a car race. Very interesting, but where are we? Who's driving these cars? What does this have to do with the previous scene? Why is this race dragging on for so long? And why should I care about it? What the fuck is that thing running on? We've been in for fuel twice and that son of a bitch just keeps going. It's a big fucking secret. This grey car contains a revolutionary machine called the RPM, created by Dr. Strangelove over here. Head of my research and development, thank you, Is she not incredible? Erotic. Passionate. Sensual. Shut up! I want her under wraps and behind bars now. I can't concentrate with all the background noise. But in a couple weeks, who's going to be the richest asshole on the planet? And that wasn't going to make the current holder of that title happy at all. Yeah, the editing is not very good. The scenes don't transition very well. Like this one, for example. Stealing the RPM right now, make too much attention. Scroll the attention! That cut is not mine. The cut really had the characters jump from one woman to another with no attempt to disguise it. David Arquette makes it to France on an assignment. And tell the director to clean the dirt that's on the camera lens. Now I want you to carry these in for me, Max. Can't have any trouble at customs. That must be him. That's great little outfit. Oh, too bad. Well, thank you. Thank you, Arrivederci. Pre-9-11 security. How times have changed. And then I saw her. And I knew I just had to have her. It's evident that David has a strong obsession with stealing any car he comes across. He has kleptomania. Pile of useless goddamn junk! I could fix this clunk up for you if I could just borrow your watch. I'll give it back. Yes, idiot. Let that complete stranger play with your engine, get inside your car, and steal it right in front of you. He seemed like a nice town. If you like trouble. He notices a group of men harassing a French woman, played by Emmanuel Seigneur. Come on, come on, break it up. This could pass as an unfunny silent movie. Are you serious? No! No way, Jose! I guess some people just don't appreciate you giving them a good turn. This is a crime against the laws of gravity. The moment I saw it, I knew whoever owned this yacht must have a really small dick. Do you think maybe he's compensating for something? 
So David goes to meet his client when he comes across another character. It just had to be Claudia. Claudia Hex. Well, well, what do you know? Famke Jensen, what the fuck are you doing here? Look, I forgave you for a pig and I spy, but there's a limit to my patience. It was the RPM I wanted to speak to you about. The RPM? Mm-hmm. The gas-free engine. So the client assigns David to steal the car carrying the RPM from his competitor. You get the RPM from me while it's down here, you'll get a modest bonus. How modest? A billion dollars. We also find out that the American detective is on his tail, but also has to deal with perverted policemen. Do you know that? Inspector. Drinks? I'm here to work. I must show you around. Take your hand off my butt. Since I can't stand underarm hair, do not find Jerry Lewis in the least bit funny. There is no way in this life I could ever be attracted to a Frenchman. I'm actually Belgian. I also hate you French people for your tinting comics. They're Belgian. Oh, then I hate you for creating the Smurfs. Also Belgian. Looky look. Belgian. Damn it, are you Frenchies even original? Femke Jensen has the same stealing fabulous cars addiction, and look at how she steals with this one. Bonjour. That's not how cars move, even with the handbrake turned off. You would need the strength of a gorilla to have the car moving like that without using the pedals. I just give up so easily in life. Cut back to David stealing yet another car. You little bastard. Max, I'm gonna rip you apart. Use your guts as dental floss. The car owner ends up being more useful than the police as he chases the thief. He manages to escape and we move to a car exhibition where guess what? Femke Jensen steals another car. If you haven't realized by now, this is the only thing the characters do for 30 minutes. You can forget about the RPM because the movie already has. Are you fucking mad? You could have killed me, you idiot! It's none of your bloody business, wanker. I kidnapped you, so now you're mine. 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 Come on, I'll tell you. So Femke somehow manages to convince the mechanic to team up with her and steal yet another car. I gave that Pierre a hundred francs to fix it. You should have given him a thousand and had it done properly. Yeah, holy shit. Our dub lines are being poorly synchronized. You have a big problem I can help you with? She dresses up as stereotypical French girl, and because this is imbecile land, the car owners are easily tricked. Slowly, slowly catch up. The detectives were just across the street. They are too useless to even notice a theft going on. And how do our Bonnie and Clyde celebrate their new theft? Try and have sex without your penis slipping out from all that oil. And some just get carried away. And then they got hit by a passing car in the street and died. Cut back to David doing guess what? Stealing more cars. <laughs> this is becoming more predictable than a porn movie. <laughs> How about cutting back to the story? Wasn't there an RPM they were supposed to steal? It's a bloody fortress. Good. Femke Jensen and the mechanic try to break into the compound. <laughs> He's still alive. No serious damage. Well, fellas. David Arquette goes to Emmanuel Seigneur's house, where the owners of the last car he stole happen to live. Did you know that Emmanuel Seigneur is married to Roman Polensky? 
I know it has nothing to do with this scene. I'm just saying. As long as I get my car back. What car? Fine. You want to do things the hard way? Talk or I'll sodomize you with 50 shades of grey. Shall we go? Well, eh? If you think I'm the slightest bit attracted to you, you're dumber than I thought. Not even a little teeny bit. You're not my type. She prefers older men who have been charged with crimes involving minors. Let me prove it to you. Help me steal a car. If you don't help me steal a car, then we can't get into the lockup and we can't get your car back. <laughs> no more of this, you brain kleptomaniacs. I need a lift to Beaulieu. Oh, well, that's exactly why I was going. Hop in. Thank you so much. Ah. You're stupid, all of you. These drivers deserve to have their cars stolen if they're this inept. Even dope teenagers with the driving experience of a Grand Theft Auto game would be able to steal them easily. You call that erotic? That was more than erotic. That was a masterpiece. Fuck off! Cut back to the detectives trying to find the car thieves, but not actually doing anything about it. I'm talking about the feelings you are hiding behind this case. You are married once. Is that what you are trying to forget? Like I said, fuck off you two. The RPM was waiting and it was almost time for the big moment. Hello. David finally decides to steal the RPM, but plans to enter the compound by flying over it in an airplane. I see that they decided to reuse the same dirty shots of the airplane from earlier. Notice how they use real people in the close-ups, but in the other shots they use dummies. He jumps 5 feet from the airplane and gets inside the complex, where the villain and Dr. Strangelove insult each other. All I need is another 6 months since March, a week ago you said shit fucking months! Jumped up fucking bloody Philistine! Fuck all! And you've been on the verge of fuck all since we started on this fucking nightmare! Screaming jellyfish. I'm on the verge of the greatest scientific discovery since E equaled MC squared! This idea was not a practical deterrent, for reasons which at this moment must be all too obvious. It seems hard to believe that things were about to get even worse. Oh, for, for Pete's sake, that's the same show from before. The clothing doesn't even match with the following take. Everyone can tell the difference, damn it. This way? Yeah. You little schmuck. Uh, mine here? Uh, your point has fainted. My boobs are so huge, he passed out. Both characters meet in the same garage, where they have a bizarre exchange of sensual banter. I missed you. Yeah, I missed you too. We were always meant to be together. Now I know what Deputy Riley was really doing between Scream 2 and 3. So are we gonna steal this car or what? Mm, thought you'd never ask. She escapes with the car carrying the RPM, while the security guards chase a Mr. Bean's car. A bit of a budget card, don't you think? Despite having guns, they let Femke Jensen have all the time in the world to beat them, while the mechanic steals the car. Now look what you do, you ass boy! This is what happens when you only keep on the worst henchmen during recession. David also tries to escape, but gets caught by the boss. Well, don't you feel stupid? Monsieur has been what? Give me a stick of butter. Put your hands up on the glass. Higher! Become romantic partners or I'll kill you. What's all this walking about? Shut up. Shut up. Give me a kiss. Uh. Oh. 
I don't think this type of glue would be that strong. Rule of unfunny. What are you, what are you doing? He died, but how? Was he too sensitive to the glass breaking? For all the awfulness in this movie, it suddenly has its funny moments. It's time, Professor, to sever our partnership. Oh no, you spilled the room with strawberry jam! F-U-C-K-E-D, fired! Got it? David contacts the inspector to make a bargain with him. He's left his yacht. Had him followed to an address in Jean les -Pins. Are you concentrating? The supposed romance escalated too quickly. You know which supposed romance isn't working? The one between David Arquette and Emmanuel Seigneur. So you haven't lied to me, is that it? What about Claudia? Claudia's my sister. What? Femke Jensen is his sister? But then the central scene at the garage was... Uh, Never mention that scene again. The mechanic delivers the car to Chiakos, but it turns out to be the wrong one as it has a different engine. What's wrong with the fucking fucking I didn't know it was a pool down there. David makes another bargain with him to bring the RPM car, which is displayed at a car convention the following day. What are you doing here? I care about you. I don't want you to get hurt. And when you say you like me, how much do you like me? Oh, sorry. Your chemistry was so wooden, I couldn't distinguish it from real wood. There's a good boy. Come on, boy. What are you doing? All right, here we go. What the fuck is going on? No one, you he activates some machine that he hid underneath the RPM car, which allows him to control the vehicle by remote control. Ah! To all units, a woman has been stolen by a car. <laughs> Excuse me, but are you sure it's not the other way around? No! Yes, don't be together again after that repugnant... thing. David and Emmanuel arrive at the airfield, where they deliver the car to the client in exchange for a ton of money. Kill them both. Run! Just then, the car owner arrives, starting up a gunfight. That jump was absolutely necessary. David moves the car by remote control with both villains trapped inside. I told you before, I can't fucking control it! Put your foot on the brake! I've got me foot on the fucking brake! He manages to guide the car without crashing into anyone and conveniently makes it to the police station. Oh, you see, man. Oh, longer, longer. Better, better. Uh, yeah, you two were completely useless and disgusting. They couldn't even get the end credits right. They fly outside the aspect ratio instead of inside it. That was RPM and how the fuck do you even call it a movie? It goes down as one of the worst things in cinema history. It's incompetent on a technical level, the editing feels like it didn't go beyond the first draft, the characters are mean-spirited and not likeable to the point that calling them humans would be an insult to humanity, and the story, if there is any, is just an excuse to show off fancy cars. But if you're one of those bad movie buffs with a litre of alcohol in your system, you'll probably have a blast with this one. I am a standard critic and thanks for watching.